Hello, everybody. My name is Cole Bleckley. I'm an advisor here at St. Louis University and the Pre-Health and Pre-Law Office. And really the purpose of this presentation today is to uh, teach you a little bit more about how our office looks and functions, what, resource, what resources we have to offer our students, and then also kind of cover uh, what are the things that it takes um, to get to medical school, right? What are the things that go into a compelling application? Uh, we are pre-health, so we do cover, that's an umbrella term that covers pre-med, pre-PA, pre-optometry, pre-vet, pre-dental students, you know, all those, all those pre-students that are interested in going to any professional health school. But for the purpose of the presentation today, I'll, I'll usually be referring to medical school, but the sentiment is very much the same. The, the things that are important for medical school are very much still important for any of those other professional health schools out there. So how our office actually looks then, we have two full-time advisors within our department, myself and Megan. We're considered secondary advisors, uh, but as a SLU student, you would actually be assigned multiple advisors and they primarily fall into two camps, primary and secondary advisors. You'll be given a primary advisor uh, assigned to you based on your major. So let's say you're a biology major, for example, you'll be given a, a primary advisor within the College of Arts and Sciences. And they're the person here on campus to make sure you're meeting your undergraduate degree coursework, make sure you're fulfilling all your requirements there, and make sure you're going to be graduating on time. As a secondary advisor, my eyes are then down the road. So I'm looking at, okay, what do the med schools want to see? So I'm helping students fit in the prerequisites that the med schools need to see into their current undergraduate plan. And I'm also helping students get, uh, get in contact with uh, experiences for putting on their applications. So finding shadowing, finding service, finding research experiences. So we work on kind of two levels, working with students in, in terms of getting their coursework right, but also helping students prepare themselves for the application process. So this is a great graphic put out by the AAMC, which is the National Governing Body of, uh, of the Medical Schools. And it really goes to show that Getting to medical school is certainly a marathon, not a sprint. And so attending you know, a presentation like this is a great way to start because yes, a lot does go into uh, getting to medical school, but the earlier you know, you know, it can be overwhelming, but the earlier you know, the better positioned you are then as a student to effectively time manage during your four years of undergraduate to prepare yourself in the best way possible. So what are medical schools looking for? It's very much a holistic process these days. It's not just, you know, a high GPA, a good MCAT, and you're in. Even students with the top GPAs and the top MCATs, looking at national data, there's still about 12% of students not getting in. So, so what are they missing? And it frankly boils down to a holistic approach. And students need to realize that, yes, the academics are important, but med schools are also looking for students with clinical experience, with significant community service. They need to know that they have students who have seriously researched the field and are now able to articulate their motivation for pursuing medical school. And they're also looking for students with great social skills too. Medicine is not just about the sciences, it's a social profession. And so students need to be able to demonstrate that in some way as well when they apply. Here in the office, we use this Anatomy of an Applicant, again, put out by the AAMC, as a great resource for helping our students assess just about where they're at in the process. So this document, it's, it's, it was formed by the AAMC as a way to help students see the holistic nature of med school admissions. And basically, all these bodies got together and said, what do we want to see in a successful med school applicant? And it's these 15 areas of competency that are portrayed by these little bubbles you can see on the screen here. So each little icon will represent a different competency like service orientation or oral communication, cultural competency, social skills. And so it does highlight that holistic nature, but also this document is great because there's, there's room in the document itself that ex expands on each of these competencies, but there's room to reflect on how you've shown the competency so far and your plan for, for learning more about that competency or, or growing more in that domain. And so this is a, a framework that we typically use with our students 
for helping them see one, the holistic nature of the application, but two, how are they specifically going to address any areas of strength or weakness? So what does our program then look like here at SLU? Uh, well, our advising sessions tend to be uh, more specific and, and tailored to the individual's needs. And so I spend a lot of time um, reflecting with students and helping them discern their own strengths and weaknesses as an applicant but then also directing them to relevant resources that they can then use um, to keep building themselves as an applicant and just as an individual in general. The, the pre-health curriculum, it looks like this. I won't spend too long on this particular slide. And for the most part, any pre-health student is gonna be starting the same way um, freshman year and sophomore year. You kind of need those foundational sciences anywhere you go. One thing that might be different from a, a pre-med student versus a pre-PA student versus a pre-dental student, there might be some upper level sciences that are a little different down the road, uh, junior and senior year that we need to be aware of. But again, that's something that we would work with students in our office uh, to help them identify the classes that they would specifically need to take based on those professional health schools they were applying to. In addition to these sciences here, we also recommend um, some kind of math here on campus most med schools are still requiring math. Some out there do not, but we still recommend it just to kind of make you the most well-rounded applicant you can be. And then of course, just humanities and, and social sciences as well. It can't all just be science as I, as I kind of pointed out with those, um, with those core competencies in the anatomy of an applicant. It's more than just, just having a stellar science GPA. Students need to be able to demonstrate oral communication, written communication, social skills, and knowledge of human behavior. Okay, so what are some of the uh, specific resources then that our office offers? We do have one-on-one -on -one advising, as I mentioned at the top. That's pretty much the primarily the, the focus of our office, uh, but we do offer other courses and workshops and, and other resources for students. One of the popular ones is Foundations of Medicine. It's just a one credit hour pass fail course uh, that's offered every spring semester. It's primarily geared, geared towards freshman and sophomore students. And it's a course that just kind of outlines the application to med school. So what is the whole application process like? What is important? What are the things we should be working on now? Just getting students um, some more knowledge of the, of the whole process early on in their undergraduate days. U101, so this is University 101. These are or, like orientation style classes that freshmen can sign up for their fall semesters here on campus. We do have U101 specifically for the Medical Scholars Program, but this year, this coming year, 2020 fall, we're gonna offer uh, a pre-med U101 as well for any student who is interested in pre-med. One of the really nice things that we can offer is our free MCAT prep course. So this is actually a course taught by current students at SLU School of Medicine. They come here on campus. They've taken the MCAT uh, you know, recently enough and they've done good enough on it to get into SLU School of Medicine. So they come and they teach this course for our current undergraduates. So juniors and seniors have the option of uh, participating in this course uh, in the springtime. It's offered every spring, a really, really nice benefit for our students here. We're gonna offer, you know, workshops about every month or so regarding just the the wide variety of topics that come up in the application process. So personal statement workshops, interview workshops, gap year workshops, things like that. Um, one of our big ones is So You Want to Be a Doctor. It's offered every fall and we invite a panel of physicians here on campus. They come in, they tell about their own path to med school but they also share what their current roles are like too, both the good and the bad. So students get that kind of exposure uh, to physicians and to the career that way. And actually in the spring, we started doing so, you may not wanna be a medical doctor. And so then we invite some of those other healthcare professionals like a PA, like an optometrist, like a dentist in, and talk with students about what their uh, process of career discernment was like and what their current roles look like too, just to get students um, more exposure to the field of the fields of healthcare as a whole. And then 
The last thing on this slide, uh, very popular with our students, because of our proximity to SLU Hospital and Cardinal Glennon Hospital, we can offer this physician shadowing program. So anytime after your freshman year, it's this program is offered uh, every semester. So summers include summers, fall and spring. Anytime after your freshman year, you can sign up for this SLU physician shadowing program and we'll match you with a physician either down at SLU Hospital or Cardinal Glennon Hospital. It's just a short shuttle ride to the South Campus and back. And, and basically students can help um, start working on their, sh their shadowing hours that way. So going to med school, it's important to have some shadowing hours under your belt. Usually we recommend about 100 hours for our students before they apply and usually about four or five different doctors. So maybe it's 20, 25 hours uh, with each physician to get that 100 number. But it's, it's kind of good for two reasons. One, it's good for you as a student. You want to know what you like and what you don't like about the, the, the field of healthcare before you go into it. But two, it's good for your application itself because when admissions committees are reviewing your application, going to med school is a big commitment. They want to know that they have students who, are, who have significant, significantly invested the time and the effort and the research into figuring out if this is the path for them. They want students that they know um, are, are ready for that commitment. So students are free to shadow on their own, of course, but we do have this physician shadowing program here at SLU to help students um, help supplement their hours if they do need help in that arena. For the shadowing program, you can get matched with up to four, four, four physicians for 20 hours each, so a total of 80 hours just through that program. A really nice uh, additional benefit for our students. Now, if you were to come to SLU, you would attend SLU 101, which is the orientation registration period in the summer. And at that time, you know, you'd simply, you'd be, you'd be meeting with your primary advisor that time to help craft your fall schedule. But at that time, you'd simply tell them that you're interested in, in pre-med or pre-PA or pre optometry any of the pre-health fields, and they would get you signed up for our Blackboard page. And so Blackboard is basically our online portal uh, it's kind of the one-stop resource for our students here on campus. Mainly, we're sending out announcements to keep you updated on what's going on here on campus. So are there events coming up that might be of interest to you? Are our workshops coming up? What are the clubs on campus doing? And then there's also more information regarding our shadowing program, regarding our committee process, and just general information too regarding each professional health school's application process. Because we are a Jesuit university here at SLU, uh, service is ingrained within the mission, and it should certainly be a part of any pre-health undergraduate days as well, right? So usually students wanna to go to these professional health schools because they wanna help people. Well, instead of just saying that in your personal statement, how can you actually show that to admissions committees? And so getting some community service experience is gonna be crucial for any pre-health student here at SLU. But like I said, it's part of the SLU mission already. So it's really nice that we have the Center for Service and Community Engagement here on campus. Their whole purpose is to help students find meaningful service experiences. So this is what I'm frequently bringing up with students in my office, because ultimately when you find service, I don't want it just to be another chore for you. I want it to be something that you can look forward to, something meaningful. So they have actually a partner database and clicking in, into the partner database will put you here and it's broken down into different categories that you can select. So every student can find something that's hopefully uh, exciting and meaningful for them. But even what I tell our pre-health pre students, don't just focus just on the healthcare tab. You can really explore those things that you might be interested in in any other areas. In general, these professional health schools just want to see that they have students uh, who are compassionate, that can show they wanna alleviate another person's pain. So you can do that in multiple areas. If you're working with the homeless or, or tutoring children, don't feel restricted to just healthcare. Awesome if you have it, but definitely um, you know, go outside of your comfort zone a little bit and, and find those things that really resonate with you. Clicking within any of those categories is gonna pull up a list, literally hundreds of organizations uh, here on campus or a little further out in the city. Clicking on any of these organizations gives you more information about them like 
if you need transportation or not, a little bit about their mission, a little bit about how you can help and times you can help. So it, they do a really nice job, the center does, of helping students find service that one, is meaningful for, meaningful for them, but two, fits with their schedule and their lifestyle too. So one thing we definitely want you to know uh, about our office here at SLU is we offer this thing called the Committee on Evaluations. And this is a process that students would go through in the year leading up to when they'd be applying to med school. And so for the large majority of our students, this is something they're going through either junior or senior year. Uh, if you don't know how the med school timeline works, so in general, uh, you're gonna be applying to medical school in the summer between junior and senior year if your goal is to start medical school immediately following undergraduate graduation. So it takes about 15 months from the time you apply to the time you actually walk in the door of your first day of medical school. So it's a long process. If you're going through, let's say, the committee senior year and applying after graduation, that's fine too. You'll just be on a, what we call a gap year plan. And honestly, more students than not these days are on a gap year plan. The average age going to med school is 24 years old. Regardless of what side of that you find yourself on, if you're going through junior or senior year, this committee process is, like I said, something you'd be going through in the year leading up to when you're gonna be applying. Essentially, it's a process where you apply to our office before you apply to the medical schools. And so you send us a personal statement, application, four letters of evaluations from professors here on campus. You then interview with a, a SLU faculty member, and as it says here, it could be from any discipline here on campus, but they're gonna interview you like you were in a med school interview. They're gonna ask you, why do you wanna be a physician? Tell me about your shadowing experiences and things like that. At the end of that, we'll compile your interview and all those documents you submitted. And as a committee, we will write a committee letter on your behalf. Uh, so why is that important? Well, for med school purposes, usually you need about three or four letters of recommendation, depending on the school, or one committee letter. So having that one committee letter is gonna satisfy all the letters of recommendation requirements you would need otherwise. And in general, most schools prefer to see the committee letters. So they see it as, a, as more of a comprehensive, as more of a standardized uh, evaluation of the student as a candidate. So really, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to advise any compelling student to go through that committee process. In general, having that letter is gonna be a, a nice benefit for them. Aside from that, the other benefit is, well, you're getting all your application materials in order well in advance of when you'd be applying that coming summer. So again, it's important to know that med school admissions are on a rolling admissions basis. And so the earlier you can apply, the better your chances of getting in. The, the later you wait in the cycle, well, now you're behind 20, 30,000 students and the classes are starting to fill up. So your chances of actually getting accepted start to go down. Going through the committee process gets everything in order well in advance. You're well organized. It's kind of just almost copying, ping, pasting at that point into the formal med school application, and it allows our students to be positioned to, uh, to do just that and to apply early in the cycle. So everything that I've talked about so far, these are resources available to all students here on campus. Even if you're just the slightest bit interested in pre-health, you can still meet with one of our advisors, you can attend our workshops, you can sign up for our Blackboard page. All these resources are still at your disposal. But I did wanna specifically talk about the Medical Scholars Program as well. This is kind of a special subset of our pre-med students. Uh, and to tell you a little bit about this program, it's a program where students would sign up, apply for, as an incoming freshman. So that's the only time you can be admitted to this program. And I'll talk a little bit more about the admissions requirements in a second. But if accepted into the program, and as long as you maintain the program requirements, which is specific coursework and a 3.65 GPA calculated annually, calculated for your cumulative grade and just your math and science grades, if you maintain those program requirements, you are guaranteed an interview 
with SLU School of Medicine uh, your sophomore year. So you're not guaranteed a seat at the med school, but you are guaranteed an interview. And actually from the interview, about 90% of students will actually receive acceptance to SLU School of Medicine at that time. So a really phenomenal figure there. Did it, it doesn't take any time out of the equation. It's still a four year undergraduate program that you'll be in, but you'll know, you know after your sophomore year if you have a seat waiting for you at SLU School of Medicine or not. So the big benefit is one, you get that guaranteed interview, but the, the other big benefit of the program is that your MCAT score really doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. So students are interviewing during their sophomore year. They, found out if, they find out if they're in or not. If they're in, awesome. They have to maintain those program requirements junior and senior year, but they just have to have an MCAT on file at that point. So the med school just wants to see that you have an official MCAT score. They don't look at your score to determine whether or not they're, they're going to keep that seat for you. So that's a lot of stress off the student uh, as well. So one unique feature of the Medical Scholars Program is a U101 or University 101 course. Uh, these are just one credit hour courses. They meet once a week uh, in the fall semester of your freshman year. And so it's basically an orientation style course to help you get more acquainted with SLU, with transitioning to higher ed in general, but our specific med scholar sections focus also on the requirements of the program and how to become a compelling applicant to med school. Traditional pre-med students have the option of signing up for University 101 courses too but it is something that we require our med scholars to do. Our sections for med scholars are solely just for the medical scholar students. The very first class that we have is a social mixer, and I actually have pictures on the next slide. It's a big occasion where all the freshman med scholars uh, will come in. We invite the upperclassmen med scholars, so sophomores who are preparing to interview with the med school, Juniors, juniors and seniors who've already been accepted to the med school, and even some uh, current students at SLU School of Medicine that were in the Medical Scholars Program and now have successfully matriculated to the med school, they come back too and, and speak with our freshmen. So the purpose is just to kind of uh, build that sense of, of peer mentoring straight away so the freshmen do get to hear some advice from their upperclassmen. But also I think it, it relieves a lot of the worries that freshmen come in with because they get to see with their own eyes and hear stories from the upperclassmen that have been successful in this program that they're about to be embarking on. That first big social mixer class, that first class of the year, that's where we will start breaking into smaller groups and meeting weekly. And we'll dive into uh, more of the topics related to how to assess your strengths and weaknesses as a med school applicant, thinking about what plans are you going to put in place. So we're big on specific plans here and, and trying to uh, address each student's specific concerns, uh, looking at student summer plans, as well as diving into things like application tips and personal statement help too. The 101 section has a peer instructor who is a sophomore medical scholar uh, as kind of a teaching assistant along the, the class schedule. So even as we move throughout the semester, they have someone in place who can serve as a peer mentor. So here are some pictures from this year's uh, Fall Welcome Social Mixer. We hold it every year in Pierre Marquette Gallery, which is the university's original library. Now it's just a nice meeting space, uh, but you can see all the freshmen along with some of the upperclassmen uh, chatting and meet, meeting each other, getting to know each other, and learning more about the program. So here are some pictures from a U101 class. We actually held this particular class at the St. Louis Art Museum, so we took a trip this fall semester. And we paired up with faculty in the Fine Arts Department to offer this Visual Thinking Strategies workshop. Uh, so hearkening back to the idea that, you know, it's not just about the science side of things to get to med school, it is a more well-rounded process. Students also have to be well-versed in social skills and communication skills. And so the purpose of this workshop was to do just that. We got students out interacting with the art 
uh, hopefully building better critical thinking uh, activities uh, related to communication skills where you can see this blindfolded young lady and the other two students had to describe that piece of art to her and see how effectively they could uh, communicate those ideas as well as building empathy you know looking at a picture and and trying to think what is that person thinking in that picture and why do you think that based on what based on what cues so uh, that was a fun day for our students and they got to see a little bit of the other side of medicine, right? It's not just science, not just knowing your bio and your chem, you have to be able to relate well with others. And ultimately the Medical Scholars Program features this community of cooperation rather than competition. I mean, the way the program is set up, students aren't competing with each other to earn seats at the medical school. The medical school is fine with admitting the students that we have Students just simply have to put in the work, essentially competing with themselves to be the best applicant they can be to go get that seat when, when the interview does come. Uh, some of these other bullet points listed on this slide, these are just some other topics that we'll cover through the course of the U101 program. So going over time management skills, um, going over the core competencies that I mentioned at the beginning published by the AAMC, as well as self-care, right? Because it is stressful to be a pre-med student. It's certainly stressful to be in the Medical Scholars Program too. Uh, so what are some strategies and resources here at SLU we can use to, to care for ourselves along the way? In closing, if you're interested in applying to the Medical Scholars Program, uh, you'll need to apply by December 1st of your senior year. It's a secondary application. So in addition to your primary SLU app, you'll need to check a box that says you're interested in applying for the Medical Scholars Program as well, though they, there will be a secondary application. Uh, but in terms of requirements, you will need an ACT of at least 30 or an SAT of 1360. There shouldn't be any C's in math or science on your transcript. But other than that, we're just looking for well-rounded students. So um, students who are maybe involved in sports or theater or music or currently doing community service, currently working. We wanna know that you can certainly balance a lot as a, as a high schooler because you'll need to balance a lot when you get here at the university if you are selected for the Medical Scholars Program. So yes, apply by December 1st of your senior year. There's a strict deadline on that, so do try to get it in by then, by then if you're interested in this program. I mentioned that the Medical Scholars has this community of cooperation, but I think that kind of holds true for all our students here at SLU. We, we try to put students in positions where they can support other students. A prime example of that is our pre-health student ambassador program. So these are upperclassmen students that hold office hours uh, just right across the hall from our office and they welcome students to come in with their own questions. I'm certainly happy to talk with students, but sometimes it does help to get a student perspective on things. If you choose not to use our pre-health student ambassadors for, for some reason, well, there's other opportunities to get paired up with a peer mentor here on campus uh, through some of the clubs. So AED, the, the large pre-health club here on campus offers a, a mentoring program these days. There are learning communities, so depending on your major, you, you have the option of being placed in a learning community. So uh, the Life Sciences Learning Community is a popular one for our pre-med students. These are all students that then live together, will go to similar classes together. So they end up kind of obviously getting to know each other really well, but then they also end up studying together and, and, and eating together and, and making friends that way too. And the Student Success Center, while not a form of, of strict peer mentoring does offer the opportunity for students here on campus to get academic support through either one-on-one -on -one tutoring, SI sections, meeting with a, a student success coach. Uh, so strategies here on campus to, to make sure you're on track academically as well. I wanted to close the presentation with just some frequently asked questions I hear a lot. Can pre-health students study abroad? Yes, you can. Uh, it is a little tougher than our non pre health students because for the most part, med schools want to see that you have your science prereqs taken in the United States. So if you are going abroad, 
awesome. Just don't plan on taking uh, any of your sciences over there that, that you need for medical school. For that reason, uh, we just need to adjust your schedule a little bit. Typically, junior year is the maybe the best time for our pre-meds to go abroad because then they're only contending with physics. So it might look like moving physics to the summer or moving physics to senior year with a gap year. There are options um, available for students uh, that know they want to study abroad. It's important to let us know early on so then we have as, as many options as possible on the table for the student. And if nothing else, well, studying abroad during the summer could be the right answer for students as well. Can pre-health students be in the honors program? Uh, absolutely, yes. So the honors program, like the medical scholars program, will require a secondary application uh, at the time you apply. Um, but unlike the medical scholars program, you can apply into the honors program as a current student. And there's nothing um, that will require you to be in one camp or the other. Students have the option of being both pre-health and honors. And actually, we have students in the medical scholars program that are also in the honors program. There are honors specific advisors here on campus, so they'll be able to work with you as well. But it's just going to be a matter of fitting in uh, a few extra coursework requirements to be in the honors program. Is it true that medical schools prefer that you take your science courses at a four year institution? I think primarily, yes, they do prefer that it comes from a four year institution. So some students will have community college credit these days. and. And most schools are fine with accepting community college credit, med schools that is, but for the most part, they, they would view it as more competitive if you had your credit from a four-year institution. So even if you do have community college credit, that's fine. You might think about supplementing those credits um, with upper level sciences, for example, here at SLU. Uh, can I take courses pass fail? Yeah, you can take courses pass fail. I wouldn't recommend taking your sciences pass fail. You're going to need a grade for those courses and any other courses that the med school has listed as a prerequisite. But if you're just taking an elective and you want to take it for pass fail, that's fine. I wouldn't take a ton of courses pass fail. I mean, uh, maybe one, two, even three is okay. It's not going to be seen that strangely by the med school. Uh, but if you start taking a ton of pass courses, pass fail courses, they might wonder what's going on. Uh, can I take required pre-med courses in the summer winter? Absolutely, you can. Um, for the most part, I don't necessarily care uh, when your courses came. I just want to know that you have them under your belt. So we do have uh, students taking prereqs during the summer or during the winter. The only thing we typically advise is, you know, if you can avoid it, at least plan to not take courses during those breaks because you're going to also be uh, needing time for shadowing and service and some of those other extracurriculars we mentioned earlier, but it is possible if students need that option on the table. Lastly, can I take courses online? This is the one that I would advise maybe against the most, so especially for your prereqs, for any uh, med school out there, for the most part, they do not take your science prereqs or any other prereqs, prereqs that they have from an online course. With that said, again, just like I said with pass fail, you can take electives online. Uh, you'll still get credit for it here at the university for your undergraduate degree the same way. But if you're trying to demonstrate that you satisfied a certain med school requirements, well, those requirements should come from an in-person class. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, probably the easiest way to get a hold of us is through our email address, phpl at slu.edu, or you can call as well, but I'm happy to answer further questions that, uh, that might pop up at this point. Thank you again.